How's it going fellow crafters? Today I want to show you how I made my modular market stalls. I made them modular by keeping the awnings separate from the tables and their contents. Because the two are separate, I can use the tables without the awnings on dungeon tiles to represent a table in a dungeon, giving the tables a dual purpose. Additionally, if I need a certain vendor for an upcoming encounter, I can quick whip up a foam table and have fun detailing it. And speaking of detailing, I had a blast doing all the little contents on the tables. I used beads, I scoured my bit box, I used milliput, foam, pretty much everything in my arsenal. Now on most of my projects, I pretty much just built with foam, maybe a few other things, but with this project, I really got to use a wide array of materials and flex some creative muscles that I might not get to in a lot of other projects. With these market stalls, I could finally use some of these bits that have been accumulating in my bits box. With all the fun I had detailing, there's definitely going to be some future episodes with more tables and more market stalls. But enough of my jabbering, let's head over to the workbench and I'll show you how I made these modular market stalls. For the tabletops, I started with an inch wide master strip. Whenever I'm making wood structures, I like to cut master strips. That way I can do the build unimpeded by having to stop and make new ones. I also make sure that the grain of the XBS foam is going along the length of the strips. So when I texture it, the grain of the wood is going to go along the length. To make the planks at the tabletop, I mark even intervals on each side so that the planks are straight. A keen eye might notice that I did a lot better on the other table than the first one. I wouldn't worry too much about getting them perfectly straight because they're going to be obscured by all the items sitting on the table. To detail the side of the table, I use my knife both as a straight edge and to cut into the foam. Once I had all my planks cut in, I went in with a mechanical pencil to increase the depth of the lines. I then went in with a steel brush to make the wood grain. I see a lot of people use brass brushes, I use steel, I just do multiple light passes. The legs would be pretty small and fragile on these pieces, so I wanted to reinforce them, so I used a pin. However, it would have been tricky to get the pin in the dead center of the leg. So what I did is I pre-punctured a hole, trying to keep the pin as straight as possible. I then pulled it out, put the leg flush to the edge, and then pierced a hole so I knew I was at the center. Then with the leg separately, I could drive the pin in, making sure it's centered. I could then cut the pin, add some glue, and combine it all together. The glue covered pin adds structural support, holds the leg close to the tabletop, and adds some visual interest. And of course, don't forget to detail the ends of the beams. Seems like I always miss one on every project. And uh, yeah, I did on this one. Going back to the master strips, I prepare the wood beams by cutting the edges to make it look like hewn wood. And then do the wood texture with a steel brush again. I cut different sizes of beams to add some variance in the woodwork. I think this makes it look more realistic and more interesting. Now that I have a surplus, I don't have to pause during my build and make more beams. I find this makes the project more enjoyable. If I made these in foam alone, they'd be pretty weak. To increase the structural integrity, I drill a hole and then insert a toothpick as far as I can on each side. I did this with almost all the beams. Where two beams would intersect perpendicularly, I left a bit of the toothpick jutting out to serve as a peg. In places where I couldn't utilize the peg, I just used pins. For adhesive, I used Irene's Tacky Glue. And here's the final structure without the awning. 
For the other booth, I just repeated the process. The cloth awning, I used paper towel that doesn't have a pattern to it. I just marked the width with each booth and then cut it long. I could adjust the length after I fit it to the piece. I made sure the width was consistent by drawing straight lines. To add some visual interest and a pattern on the edge, I marked out even intervals and then cut out the desired pattern. I then applied a mixture of half water, half Elmer's glue. After the awnings had dried to the structures, I went back in with 100% glue because the paper towel wasn't quite sealed enough. Here are the awnings as they're drying. I went in and cut the square detail on the one awning because it was a little too long for my taste. I started painting the cloth awnings but then decided it'd be best to do the wood first because of the technique I was using. To make the wood look like it's been outside and it's weathered, I used Black Magic Crafts technique for painting wood. If you're not familiar with this, check out his Gallows episode where he talks about it in detail. Where the colors you're looking for are raw sienna, suede, and then a black wash. With the wood all painted up and dried, I could then go in and finish the awning. I did a couple base coats and then added some silver and gold detail. I kept this detail kind of simple because I didn't want it to distract from the contents on the table. I then dry brushed with the same colors I used for the base coats, but with white mixed in. I ended up not washing the awnings because I didn't apply Mod Podge to them so the seal wasn't that great. And I was afraid it would darken the pieces too much. And here's the finished structure. I might actually go back in and add some more detail to the awning, but for now it's table ready. Alright, now for my favorite part. As you can see, I've built up quite the collection of bits, so I had a lot to choose from. I drew inspiration from Wylock's Alchemy Lab video and used beads to make the potions. About half of the beads were done using this rainbow set. You can find it at Michael's. It's a bit pricey, but it goes a long way. I deviated from Wylock's video and used different beads for the tops. They're these small silver beads that you can find at Walmart. To arrange the potions, I just put the tall ones in the back and the short ones up front. I also added a few cardboard books that Wylock shows how to make in his Scrolls and Books episode. I almost forgot to mention, I sealed the tables before I added the potions. I didn't want to spray a matte varnish on the potions, and I'm using khaki glue to attach them to the table. And there you have your potion vendor. Incredibly useful piece of terrain. Now we'll take a look at each of the items on the produce table, starting with the carrots. To make the portion of the carrot called the taproot, I used milliput. I just rolled up a really skinny roll of it, cut it into segments, and then made it into conical shapes. It should look something like this. Then to add all those characteristic side grooves, I used this wire tool from the basic sculpting kit you can find on Amazon. I applied some water to make sure it didn't stick and lightly rolled it across the mat. Here's the previously stated piece of fake plant. I just cut off a segment for each carrot. I didn't bother painting it because it already has a pretty good color. I attached it with super glue once the milliput had dried. To paint the taproot of the carrot, I just used pumpkin orange. Then to accent the grooves, I went in with my newly acquired Citadel Wash, the Agrax Earthshade. I can't believe I waited this long to finally buy a Citadel Wash, but man, are they effective. And with that, you have some pretty good looking carrots, good enough for a Peter Jackson cameo. Next up, we got the wheels of cheese. The 
These are incredibly simple to make. I just took the foam beads that you can find at Dollar Tree, cut off the top and the bottom so there was still a bit of a curve, and then with a couple I cut out a wedge, and then painted them all with candlelight yellow. Attaching them to a pin makes painting much easier. Once they're glued to the table, I went in with another Citadel shade, Casandora Yellow. Next up, we have the bunches of grapes. For the bunches of grapes, I'm using this portion of a fake plant from Michaels. I checked to see if it was at Walmart, and it is at Walmart, so you should be able to find it there. I just picked out the pieces that had a somewhat conical shape that looked like a bunch of grapes, and then painted them black. I then went in with a very dark dioxazine purple, lightened that up with white, and dry brushed. I then went in with a black citadel wash. And finally we have these leeks, or bok choy. I'm not really sure what they're supposed to be, but they look pretty cool. Tucked away on my desk I had these damaged trees that I got on Amazon for incredibly cheap. I just cut off a few branches and then immediately had the structure that I was looking for. With all the fun I had detailing, there's definitely going to be some future episodes with more tables and more market stalls. Well, there you have it. That's how I made my modular market stalls. If you like this craft, please hit that like button. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. I got more videos on the way. I also recently became an Amazon affiliate. If you go to Amazon using these links and buy something, I get a small commission with no cost to you. Through that simple click, I can get some funds put into the channel and use those to make it better. Well, with all the YouTube stuff over, I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on crafting, friends.